What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of the Sports Courier. On the line with me is former WWE star, a man that has wrestled all around the world. He is Antonio the Promise Thomas. Antonio, thanks so much for the time, man. How's it going? I'm doing great. How you doing, Fred? I'm doing all right. Now, you spend a lot of your time in the New England area. Are you happy with the uh, Boston sports scene right now outside of the Celtics uh, being over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy with it. Uh, War's the first biggest turnaround uh, in one season. Last year was a nightmare and completely forgotten. And uh, it was, um, yeah, you know, I, 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 going into the season with the Red Sox, I, I liked a lot of the pickups that they had. Um, you know, low risk guys that if they didn't work out, you know, were just on one year deals. And, uh, the money was well spent, and uh, man, I never, I never thought that uh, you know they would win this year, and especially, especially after Game Three, uh, all uh, in the World Series, all the momentum went to uh, to St. Louis after that uh, obstruction play, and then also even more so uh, going into the ninth inning in Game Two against Detroit. So. Uh, it's, you know, indescribable, I guess. So, but I'm very happy. So. Definitely, definitely. And especially after everything the Boston area has been through. I mean, it's definitely great to right. see them having success. Right. right. Having, having that, having that positivity. Now you have stayed positive in life after WWE. You have applied your craft around the world. And now I understand you are mentoring wrestlers as well and helping them with their careers uh yeah i mean i'm doing doing what i can um just passing along the stuff that i have learned all my stops all over the place and learned from so many uh different people different styles uh you know different philosophies and um that i continue to learn myself and uh Last May, um, in 2012, I opened Ring Sport uh, Pro Wrestling Gym right outside Springfield, Mass. And, um, you know, it's going really, really well now. I actually had a, a show locally uh, on this past Saturday and had a little, m more than half the show homegrown guys that I trained and helped develop and mentor and one of them whom I worked with and uh, was so proud. Uh, in the short period of time I've owned the gym, I uh, was so very happy. Uh, you know, probably the proudest moment I've had um, was a couple nights ago. Seeing all these guys, well, you know, one of whom had his first match, um, uh, and everyone just was, you know, you saw the hard work and effort put in. Um, all around, from even people that weren't working on the show there for Ring Crew and, and helping out and doing their part. Um, we just have a great group of people and always looking to add on to that. Um, you can hit me up at Ring Sport Pro Wrestling at Gmail. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at Promise Thomas or under Antonio Thomas on Facebook. Um, and if you are in the Western Mass area, Connecticut area, you're looking to train, uh, looking to learn the right way, looking to learn along with me. I'm in there in the ring with you, um, and I'm learning myself. Uh, you, you never stop learning, and especially in my case. So um, it's just going, it's going very well, and I want to continue to get the word out slowly but steadily. And um, we got a good thing there. It's awesome to hear, man. Definitely awesome to hear. But I would imagine it takes a facet of selflessness to be able to open up a wrestling school and mentor a lot of guys because you are still a relatively young guy yourself, you know, and you're a damn good pro wrestler as well. I mean, there's got to be some opportunities that have popped up your way that maybe you've had to dial back on because of the school, right? Um, Not... Uh, not as of yet. I mean, I I have I've had opportunities uh, 
in the past where I have gone to Japan, where I've gone to Italy, where I've gone to Puerto Rico. And at the time, I was uh, partnered with um, one of the guys who was one of my original trainers. So um, when I wasn't there for an extended period of time, there was someone there to watch over things and to uh, keep track of things. Now I'm you know, pretty much by myself, but I do have a good group of people around me. If something were to come up where I had to go away, um, you know, for an extended period of time, uh, I was in Italy last year for a couple weeks training over there. And, um, you know, I have a, a good group of guys, um, experienced guys that, uh, you know, I'm very structured, I'm very hands-on, I like to do stuff myself, but the guys that I have assisting me and helping me out um, are the exact same way. So, um, you know, it, it it works both ways, so it hasn't been a problem uh, as of yet. I shouldn't say problem, but it hasn't, uh, we haven't gotten to that to where it would be a problem. And you were part of WWE for a couple years, 2005, 2006, as the popular OVW tag team, the Heartbreakers. Then they brought you and Romeo up on the main roster as the Heartthrobs. I really feel like they kind of creatively missed the mark. You guys ended up getting released, and at that time, there was such a huge turnover rate, you know, as far as, like, bringing talent in, releasing talent, bringing talent in, releasing talent. And a lot of those guys never even came back to the business after WWE. What made you keep going and staying positive while finding new success? I just love wrestling. Um, uh, this is all I wanted ever, uh, all I ever wanted to do. And, um, you know, being in WWE was, was great. It was a goal that I had. It was a dream I had since I was eight years old. And it, completely didn't have to go the way that I wanted it to or expected it to go. Uh, but I still got there and we did what we could with what we were given. And, uh, I did not, I never got sour on the business. Uh, I mean, man, we got so much shit thrown at us and in a lot of cases, rightfully so. But, uh, you know, I'm not one of those people that, that's bitter is going to go blame people or any, you know, blah, 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 and make excuses. Uh, being released gave me an opportunity to open new doors, and that's exactly, not to use a, you know, a steep cliche, but it completely opened new doors for me to go all around the world and, and learn different styles and learn from different people and, and kind of just do my own thing and be myself and be able to breathe and have fun and, and, all I'd known was WWE up until that point and, you know, a few short years in the Northeast Indie scene. Uh, and my career has pretty much gone in reverse where right about now is where I should be, you know, 11 years in is where I should finally be getting to WWE and uh, would be completely ready. I'm a man now and I've been around the world and, and, it was like that in the old days. It was like, nah, I don't want to be one of these guys since the old days, but, you know, you, things don't start to click until, man, I don't know, uh, a few years ago, and, and they're still clicking, and I'm still trying to find myself, and, and to try to find yourself in, in with a new gimmick and, and so many changes in such a short period of time when you've only been working for two years, and then all of a sudden you're thrust into a worldwide space spotlight i mean that's pretty tough so uh i just love wrestling man and uh i've seen so many guys yeah they've they've come and gone and had such tremendous talent and uh but there have been a lot that have persevered and, and you know stayed the course and because they love wrestling and you get nothing nothing good happens to your body from being in a wrestling ring so uh you have to love this to do this. And the people that love it, uh, that aren't in it for the money, that aren't in it for any bullshit fame or any stuff like that, you can tell they're going to be around. This business is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Well said, sir. Well said. 
Now, when they were having that huge turnover rate in the mid two thousands, I mean, do you feel like the talent had a, a short leash as far as uh, given time to succeed, or do you think it was just the nature of the business at the time? So I think it was both. Uh, we were told in developmental that a lot of guys were going to be getting guys and girls were going to be getting called up and it was going to be sink or swim. So they were just throwing stuff at the board, just calling people up, you know, at random, uh, they get an idea or they're on a whim. Hey, let's fly this person in. Uh, and that's kind of what happened with us. We got called on a, a Friday to debut in Madison square garden on a Monday, not really knowing anything. Uh, and, but we were ready. We knew that. So we were as prepared as possible. Were we ready? No, you can't teach experience, but, um, you know, uh, it was, it was definitely a a sink or swim and you saw that with such a great ratio of, of turnover and, and fortunately a lot of talent went by the wayside, but they got a lot of great talent as well. Uh, out of it, uh, but you know the guys that you know stayed the stayed the course or were given shots with you know to to be there for years. A lot of them got lucky. A lot of them, uh, you know, stayed the course and just were. You know, Dolph Ziggler was a guy that was a caddy, then he was a guy that was a cheerleader, and then he was a guy that was doing nothing and developmental, and then you know he just he. He's one of those guys that could have gotten released very easily. Uh, Johnny Curtis, you know, who's now Fandango, was there for yeah, five years, six years, and uh, you know, it, it. You know, now there isn't that turnover rate, but you need. You never know when something's going to pop up and stick, and and um, the longer you're there, uh, to, you know, to just just wait out and keep trying things and throwing things at the wall, uh, the better chance you have of, of, of success. So there's definitely more of a structure in place and there's definitely a, a connect now between developmental and the main roster. And, uh, it's, um, it's different and a lot of ways it's, it's, it's for the better. Um, but you know, in the back then it was, it had its advantages too. So, um, you know, it, it was what it was and it, it, you know, uh, it's definitely, they've got a great thing going now and it's definitely great that they have that connect and, and, you know, have a performance center and, and so many, uh, all these great, you know, facilities and trainers available to them now. It, it took them long enough. I mean, <laughs> we had Jim Cornette like years and years say guys you know you gotta have some more synergy between developmental and uh and the main roster i think there was one time where he he was booking the feud between uh doug basham and damage who later became danny basham and one day doug basham just walks in with his head shaved he's like what happened he goes oh uh they wanted me to have my head shaved and he just goes crazy because the office didn't tell him hey we want to have doug's head shaved and team him up with his rival on ovw (laughs) yeah it was i mean it was you know, I love Jimmy. I will, uh, you know, Jimmy's like, uh, you know, my wrestling dad. I mean, he, uh, he gave us the world and did everything for us. And to this day, you know, even through, you know, working with him in ring of honor and, and after WWE, I love Jimmy and, uh, he has his detractors and whatnot, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not one of them. So, um, yeah, there was, man, I would have, it was just, you know, there was nothing correlated from the, from what went on in OVW to what went on at the main roster. And, you know, we had, you know, learning from Jim Cornette and Danny Davis, and my God, Lance Storm is, you know, maybe the, the, the best trainer for me personally probably that I've ever had and so many people will say that um and you know having Bill DeMott there as well giving you a different side of the training and and um 
you know, Al Snow later on and then getting, you know, having pa- Paul Heyman work there at OVW. I mean, man, you, you couldn't ask for <laughs> those names speak for themselves. And, uh, you know, and there's great, amazing trainers there now, but now they have that connect. It would have been amazing to have been able to uh, <clears throat> do the gimmick we were doing in OVW and have them say, no, that's not what we want. We want you to do this. Let's work on it. And we're not going to bring you up until you, you know, have fine-tuned it, have worked out all the kinks, uh, have come up and done some house shows and worked with the big boys, worked with the guys in the main roster. Um, not till we send some guys from our main roster to work with you guys down there, which WWE did at the time. I mean, Tommy Dreamer was down there as head of developmental and, uh, he was, man, I can't speak enough about Tommy, how he helped everybody. Tommy's one of the boys and continues to be, um, you know, just go set that for everybody. Uh, maybe the most selfless, unselfish guy there is. Um, cause he just looks out for everyone. And, you know, we had Dudley's coming down there. Mark Henry would come down there. Um, but yeah, there was just no, no connect to where this is what we want from you. Do it, fine tune it, get it right. So when we bring you up to TV, you're as ready as you can be. Mm-hmm. And definitely. And Bill DeMott, this guy's been getting a lot of flack over the last year from some past trainees. And listen, you know, everybody's dealt with everybody differently. You know, somebody could have a great experience with one dude. Another guy could have a totally different experience. In your experience with Bill DeMott, was it overall positive? Let me let me tell you something. When I got to OVW, my first two weeks there was Bill DeMott's first two weeks there. And... You know, Bill came in when when Lance would be two weeks on, and then he'd go home for a week, spend time with his family. And then that would be Bill's week to come in. Bill came in, and Bill has, um, just like Lance, just like any trainer, has their way of, of uh, training. And then Bill put us through the ringer. Bill, you know, he had that drill sergeant mentality, and there were guys that, you know, were scared to death to go to practice because it was it was kind of like a boot camp. But he was there at the beginning. He was there to see we what we were made out of. This was our job. We were getting paid to train. And as he didn't know us, he didn't know who we are, I would have done the same thing, you know. Uh, and, my God, I, I'd never, I'd been to Japan, I'd been, you know, all around the world, all different kinds of wrestling training, MMA training, uh, CrossFit training. Bill DeMott, man, he had some of the best workouts, uh, hardest workouts I've ever had, and it made me so much mentally stronger, uh, physically stronger. Uh, they were tough, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, if you did what you were told, which anyone should do when they're getting paid and doing their job. You did what you're told. You worked hard, came up to you, shook your hand, gave you a wink and let you know that you did a good job. And, uh, as Bill, you know, the more Bill, more time Bill spent there, you know, the more he got to know the guys and, and, you know, it, it, I, I like Bill. I have nothing, uh, like I said, Training is tough, and he'll probably tell you that himself. But that's your job. So if that's what he wants us to do, yeah. That as much as I hated sometimes, you know, going doing a house show in Indiana, four hour drive, coming back, getting three hours of sleep, being at the ring at you know eight in the morning um, for workout. As much as I fucking hated that, it toughened me up, it toughened the, all of us, those that did it, toughened us up, and it was on his own time, he didn't have to be there, Bill doesn't have to be there to open up uh, the training facility at 6am or 7am, or spend time on the weekends, uh, Bill never denied anybody 
Um, hey, Bill, can I get extra ring time? Never denied that. And, uh, uh, you know, people can bash him all they want. There's just people that make excuses. If he has a, if it's something personal that happened, I don't know. I never had a problem with, personal problem with Bill. Um, so, you know you're going to work your ass off and you're going to work hard. Um, you know, but is there, if you own an NFL team, do you want, uh, you know, are you going to bitch at, you know, uh, uh, Bill Parcells or a, 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 you know, a successful coach that gets his guys in shape and, and in game shape and ready to play on Sunday? Are you going to, you know, chew him out or cuss? I mean, I mean it, it, you know, uh, I heard so much. I myself, I'm glad you brought this up because I've heard so much stuff. You know, so many people talk about, you know, oh, poor old me. And hey, if you got a personal problem with them, that's that's fine. That's between you guys. Don't air it out in, in public. Um, I know plenty of people, plenty of friends of mine, good friends of mine. Um, and I know people that aren't friends of mine who I'm just friendly with that I've trained with and that I know and that. Um, we all went, we did our job, we worked hard and we don't have a problem with Bill. So, you know, make of it, you know, the people that, you know, bitch and moan about them, you know, look at their history and then, you know, I guess you can kind of <laughs> make your own conclusions. It, you said something to our mutual friend, Victor Sosa, that, had me gobsmacked. I believe he asked you on his show, Wrestling Weekly, what was your best match in WWE? And <clears throat> you said it happened to include Mike Mizan and The Miz. Can you tell us about this yeah. match? Tell you about the match? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was... Um, it was uh, August of 2005. It was in Memphis uh, on a house show on a Sunday afternoon. And it was uh, it was uh, us versus the Miz and Chris Cage, um, who was Kaylin Croft in WWE. You know, another guy who got you know shuffled in and out in the mid two thousands. There, a uh, great worker, and uh, it was actually it, was, it was, we welcomed it because it was two guys that we had. You know, more so, more so. Chris, the Miz was, you know, brand new. We'd only worked with him a few times in training, but Chris, we worked with all the time in house shows and practice. And that made a big, you know, that's another thing today. Guys working together in NXT and then coming up together and working on the main roster, they're so much more comfortable in calling stuff and working with each other, as opposed to you know, coming up and, and, you know, where it can be a shark tank, well, you're, you're brand new and you're working in with guys who have been there and experienced and are going to, they're going to leave their stamp and have their imprint on the match. And, uh, which is, is not a bad thing, but you also have to, you got to get yours and you got to do your part. So it was, it was, it was welcome to be working with those guys. And, uh, um, you know, we just went out and we kind of just called it on the fly, which is which is how I like to do things. I mean, we had our finish, we had our comeback, but uh, I remember we called something and, and, and Romeo was like, the crowd just popped for something that I think we broke up a pin or something on a double hip toss. And the crowd just popped huge for it and the ref was drawn the other baby face outside the ring. So it was behind the rest back and Romeo's like, that's the cutoff. That's the cutoff. Cause we broke up a pin behind their back. And, uh, that's he, you know, the fans can see it. Hey, he's doing something he shouldn't do behind the rest back where the ref can't see. Boo. That's fucking, that's what a heel does. And it's Memphis. So beautiful. And we just, you know, we, uh, Everything just just felt good. We wasn't technically a five star match. I don't think you're going to have any kind of <laughs> technical masterpieces with four guys as green as they were at the time. But um, we got to the back, man, and and you know, Dean Malenko comes up, and you know, yeah, that was fucking great. That was 
great, you know, way to listen to the crowd. Just praise from everybody. Shawn Michaels, Edge, that was great. You know, we're like, what is what is going on? And and you know, uh, even the tag match after that, after that, one of the guys came up to us and said, "Man, good shit. That was great shit, man. We got a tough act to follow." And um, that's what it's all about for me. You know, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about, uh, you know, being on TV or anything like that. Uh, although those things are great, but it was about the respect of your peers when you walk back through the curtain and, and getting that reaction from the crowd. And, um, yeah, all around, that was my probably my favorite match ever. And how many boas do you own from your uh, Heartbreakers days? Oh, man. Uh <laughs> Is it oh, more? Is it more? Is it more than Hulk Hogan? No, no, no way, man. He's got the Mister America ones. He's got the NWO ones. Um, the modern, like mangy and stuff. That that shit gets like <laughs> gets like a little cat when it doesn't, you know, gets all dirty and rolls around in the mud, and <laughs> you know, it, yeah. uh, man, I haven't worn those things in a while. A couple times for Chikara, but that's it. Uh, you know, but uh. I don't know. Yeah, I had like between five and ten. They're all my mom's mom's attic stuffed away somewhere. <laughs> now I understand you got a big show coming up for New England Championship Wrestling, which has been on a great resurgence uh, in recent years. Yeah, NECW um, this uh, Saturday, July, uh, July. Jesus, uh, <laughs> this Saturday, November ninth. Uh, Close Beverly- enough. Close enough, yeah. I mean, why not? Uh, um, NECW double intensity uh, in Beverly, Mass. Um, the last show, uh, unfortunately, lost the NECW title in controversial fashion. I was attacked from behind uh, by a newcomer by the name of Genesis, uh, from not Sega Genesis, the game, but uh, very... Uh, a promising uh, up and coming guy that that hopefully is, is people will hear about very soon. He's about six five, two sixty. Um, you know, uh, wants to learn and wants to get better, but he's going about it the wrong way right now. And uh, uh, myself and a mystery partner taking him on, and uh, his uh, partner in crime, Jeremy Prophet, another Canadian import. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, in Beverly, Mass uh, this Saturday, 7 p.m. bell time, Cove Community Center. You can go to NECW.TV for more information on that. And, uh, you know, the NECW TV as well. It's locally on uh, Cozy TV in the Boston area. If you live in, in or around the Boston area, Channel 62, Thursday nights, slash Friday mornings, um, you know, at midnight, midnight or 12.30. I always forget. I have too many hits to the head. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you can find all that information on NECWTV.TV. If you do not live uh, in the Boston area, NECW on YouTube, look it up, look up the TV. It's a half-hour show. Um, uh, it is Thursday night at 12:30, so I was correct. Um, you know, uh, check it out. It's a half hour. You get one or two complete matches, good matches, eight to ten minutes. Um, it's to the point. The storylines are to the point. They're not convoluted. You don't have to DVR through. Um, you know, two hours of. Uh, maybe some stuff you don't want to see or, you know, divas standing on the apron to, you know, get tagged in and do a schoolgirl. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's a half hour. It's quick. People are busy today with, with real life, with families. There's a lot of wrestling on TV. This is a half hour. This is something you can watch on your lunch break. This is something you can watch before you unwind and go to bed, check out on your iPad tablet um it's very easy to follow it doesn't insult 
the wrestling fan. Uh, it's old school booking. Um, Sheldon Goldberg, the promoter, has been promoting since 2000. I've worked for Sheldon pretty much since I started uh, back in 2002, and um, you know it means a lot to to work for the company and to help promote the company and to help it grow. And uh, um, NECW has just started, you know, spreading out to some other venues. They're getting TV down in Rhode Island, so I'm really hoping and and I really think that there's a good opportunity that it can kind of. Uh, Territorize, I should matter if that's the right word, kind of the New England area and kind of, um, you know, make it a, a territorial, make the Northeast territorial for NECW. And, uh, you know, it is New England Championship Wrestling and, uh, you know, the, the talent keeps getting better, the in ring product keeps getting better, uh, slowly but steadily, the, the YouTube views. Uh, keep going up and, uh, with, with some of the recent shows, uh, it's going to continue to get that way. And we just got to get the word out. So, um, you know, if you get a chance, anyone listening to this gets a chance, check it out. If you're in the area, come on down, uh, Beverly Mass this Saturday and, um, you know, uh, see everything live and up close, get to yell, get to boo, get to cheer. You know, do whatever you want. You pay your ticket, uh, get to be right up there near the action. So um, you will get your money's worth. Y'all should definitely check it out. And a lot of great talent from the past as well You know, came through NECW, if I'm not mistaken. Right? John Cena, Kofi Kingston, just to name a few. Yup. Uh, I believe the only independent match John Cena did, maybe outside of UPW or developmental, was with NECW. Um, they were the first place to bring in, I believe, to bring in Doug Williams. Um, they brought in the Briscoe brothers way back before they started working for Ring of Honor. Um, uh, Japanese female by the name of Sumi Sakai, I believe that was the first place she came in. Uh, Sheldon has always brought in international talent. Johnny Storm, Jody Fleisch back in the day. Beth Phoenix worked there. Kofi, Fandango, uh, you know, uh, myself, uh, Kenny Doan, Ken Dykstra, however you, you know him. A lot of guys locally in this area. Uh, Eddie Edwards, you know, got his um, started there early on as well. Uh, continued to work there recently. Bobby Fish, um, the guy that started started there and is still there. Slick Wagner Brown, one of the most underrated guys out there. We've got some great up-and-coming talent, a guy – that I trained and that I've been feuding with um, one of my trainees from ring sport, Sean Burke, who is now the NECW champion recently had a, um, was part of the last tryouts in um, WWE um, in Florida. And, um, you know, (laughs) I don't know how long he will be around here. So uh, hopefully very soon um, we'll see him on a, a, a bigger stage, but, um, you know, guys like Jeremy Prophet, guys like Genesis. Recently, uh, Tito Santana was brought in. Dangerous uh, Danny Davis, the not the Danny Davis I know and worked with from OVW, but the referee Danny Davis. Um, and I got the opportunity to team with Tito Santana on that show. So they're giving, you know, giving fans, you know, NECW as always, and Sheldon Goldberg has always been about the local talent, homegrown talent, building up those guys. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, but now he'll, you know, every now and again, uh, treat the fans to, you know, you know, a throwback to, to so many fans who grew up watching the WWWF and are familiar with, you know, wrestling the way that a lot of us loved it back in the eighties. And, you know, um, Tony Atlas, you know, he brought in, um, so it gives you really um, a little bit of everything, uh, but mostly the lo- the focus is on local homegrown talent, guys who um, are the future, guys that are the present, guys that you know have been the past, like myself, like Wagner, um, a guy like Johnny Idol who was brought back recently, who many people aren't familiar with, but is a hell of a worker. Um, you know, guys that are still there and are, you know, certainly not 
anywhere near done with what we want to do and accomplish in our career or with NECW. So sorry if this is a mouthful, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it, it, it gives really, it gives, I'm not going to put my name or work for a place that, you know, promote a place that I don't believe in. Um, and, um, that I don't have strong feelings that, you know, good things can happen for this product. Uh, the females there, um, Alexis, uh, Mistress Belmont, you know, check out any of, of their matches. Watch those two work together. It is wrestling. Um, it is not hair pulling. It is not. Uh, they are, they certainly could be models, uh, but they are, um, they're wrestlers first and foremost. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it, it really is something that if you haven't checked it out, please do. Um, and, um, you know, NECW.TV, um, and, uh, has all the information for the TV and for the live events. Awesome, man. Definitely looking forward to that show. Antonio, I want to thank you so much for the time. Before we go, where can fans find more info on you and your school? Uh, they can hit me up on Twitter at Promise Thomas. Um, also, you can email me, ringsportprowrestling at gmail. Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook. I usually you know, prefer to hit me up on Twitter, but Facebook at Antonio Thomas. Um, but at Promise Thomas, you know, Twitter, uh, hit me up. No website right now. Um, you know, I'm working on that. Uh, I had one before. I don't know. I just, I, I need to get kicked in the ass when it comes to doing these, um, <laughs> the website <laughs> stuff and whatnot. But, um, you know, Twitter and Facebook certainly have, have worked good for me and, um, uh, the Gmail address, Ring Sport Pro Wrestling at Gmail. Um, also, uh, come out, see me, talk to me, say hi at the live events this Saturday, NECW, Beverly Mass. Also, this Sunday, wrestling is art in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, 4 p.m. If you, the all those Chikara fans out there, all those, uh, if you're a Colt Cabana fan, and who isn't, Come on out. You're going to see Cole Cabana versus Drew Gulak, who is, if you haven't seen Drew Gulak, you need to see this man wrestle because that's exactly what he does. He wrestles. I'm going to be taking on a man by the name of Francis O'Rourke, uh, who likes to be called Frank. And you are going to see wrestling is art, Chikara, the wrestling is stuff. You get to see, you get to see the OVW. Antonio Thomas, but I actually can somewhat wrestle now, and I'm not just <laughs> you will see actual wrestling stuff that I've learned in you know the last ten years and through amateur wrestling and grappling and whatnot. You will see some comedy, you will see some haha, you will see a monkey puppet and maybe a monkey flip uh come on out, go to wrestlingisart.com, get all the info there. And um, come check it out. Come say hi. Uh, you know, the, the fans are great at all the shows. So um, without them, uh, you know, we can't get the reaction for what we do. We can't feed off what what how they respond. We, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for them. So thank you for everyone for listening. And if you come on out, please say hi. Shoot me a tweet. I promise, Thomas. That's enough. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> At promise, Thomas. Antonio, thanks so much for your time, man. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it, Fred. Thank you.